YouTube. What you see before you is the four channel UAV aerial video platform that I've designed that I call the Ghost. It is inspired quite heavily by the Experimental Airlines Axon, however, I do not like how the Axon, when you hold a camera in the upper fuselage tube, how you can see the nose. So this one was designed to have a clear field of view holding a GoPro there on the front. Uh, we're gonna start with this central little wing motor mounting section and proceed from there. It's the wing, motor, and ESC mount is comprised of two pieces of foam that are five by 24 centimeters, two pieces of foam that are 8.2 by 24 centimeters, and two pieces of foam that are seven by five centimeters. These two are the top and bottom sections these two are the side sections. I've drilled holes in these for my carbon fiber wing mounts. And the carbon fiber wing mounts are going to interface against these PVC cards that are glued to the top. And they're going to run through these holes that I've drilled in the side. Remember that gluing is permanent, so run your cables and make sure everything fits before gluing the sides and bottom on. I built a motor mount for this aircraft out of just PVC cards and mounting tape and the thrust angle is between three and five degrees depending on the weight of your FPV equipment. I'm running a very light FPV setup so I've gone for about three degrees here. Remember that here in the back of the wing mounting section we left ourselves only four centimeters between the edge that the motor is interfacing against and where the carbon fiber wing mount goes so don't forget that if you make a motor mount longer than four centimeters this isn't going to work. The nose section consists of two pieces that have a rectangle, 14.4 by 5 centimeters, attached to a right triangle, which is 30 by 14.4 centimeters, and a variety of formers. These are all 5 centimeter width. There's one that is 33.3 centimeters long, one is 35 centimeters long, one is 5 centimeters long, and two are 13.2 centimeters long. The 35 centimeter and 5 centimeter formers are the top and bottom, respectively. The two 13.2 centimeter long formers form this rectangle, and the 33.3 centimeter long former is the hypotenuse of this triangle. And you may need to bevel that side, as you see I've done here. I'm just gonna clean that up after I glue it, bevel it so that it fits more flush, and uh, that's pretty much it. All the electronics are going on the top of this nose, and so we can just seal it up like this. There's nothing to put inside. To construct the fuselage, cut six pieces of foam. Two rectangles for the sides are 80 by 6.2 centimeters. The top and bottom are 76 centimeters long and consist of a rectangle of 24 by 5 centimeters. This matches the dimensions of the wing mount. And from 24 centimeters back to the end of the tail, a 26th, you're going to want to taper from the 5 centimeter width up there to one foam thickness and this is where we're going to mount the tail. In addition, I use two 5x5 five five centimeter formers. The way I construct the fuselage is to glue formers to the top piece, ensuring that they're square, the speed square, then I glue the formers and top piece to the side piece only for the front 24 centimeter rectangular section. Then glue the bottom piece on, again only for the front 24 centimeter section, that allows us to glue one servo into each side piece here and route the servo cables through the front before we glue the tail together. If you're like me and both buy cheap servos and reuse servos, you're going to want to test both the servos and all of the connectors before gluing everything up. You're also going to want to secure where the connectors plug into either the other connectors or the original servo cables with duct tape because if one of these becomes unplugged after we glue the whole fuselage together it will be inaccessible. So, As you can see here my servos are working quite well. To glue the rest of the fuselage together I like taping the tail in the proper position and then just applying glue and squeezing that together. To construct the horizontal stabilizer start with a 20 by 20 centimeter square Got three triangles out of it, one 10 by 13.8, one 12 by 3 here, and one 6 by 6. In addition to that, cut the hinge line six centimeters from the trailing edge. The total surface area of this piece is about 300 centimeters, which comes out to about 12% of the main wing area, and the rudder is approximately 25% of that total area. 
To construct the horizontal stabilizer and rudder, first start with a 20 by 20 square. Cut two 8 by 2 triangles out of the top left and top right corners. Cut your hinge line 6 centimeters forward of the trailing edge. And draw a rectangle that is 1.8 centimeters by 4 centimeters here. And this is going to be your mounting square. With the aft section of the fuselage glued together, it's time to glue in the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Just make sure the vertical stabilizer is exactly straight, and I do that with the lines on this cutting mat. To complete the tail section, bevel the leading edge of the horizontal and vertical stabilizers and bevel out the hinge line of the rudder and elevator. At this point, I dry fit everything, ran all of my servo cables and my power wire through the top of the front of this wing slash motor mount section. And the tail was obviously glued in the last step, so uh, this is whole aircraft right now. It's really starting to come together. To construct the wing, first laminate one side of the wing. I do this with uh, iron-on laminating films, but you can also do it with packaging tape. On the side that is not laminated, measure a line 20 centimeters back from the leading edge and fold the wing over there. I've made here three spars. It's made out of foam that are two centimeters thick in the length of the wing, in my case 122 centimeters. One of these is actually made out of Dollar Tree foam board and not model plane foam because my spar is four millimeters thick, so I couldn't quite fit it right in model plane foam. If you have a six millimeter spar or a six millimeter aero shaft, then just use that. Just use model plane foam for all three spars. In a similar fashion to the fuselage of this aircraft, I have glued the servos into the wing ahead of time. This is the wing, almost completed. I'm going to glue down the spar, which has been glued together. I hinge it here with painter's tape, five centimeters back from the leading edge. I've also glued down servos inside of the body of the wing. Be careful, it's important that your spar is taller than your servos, or else this won't work right. And I've also cut holes in the top surface where the servo arms go, just so that the servo arms can poke through them as I glue this down. And I have ran the cables for the servos to a combiner cable and out of the front, I'll tape it on the front with strap and tape. And that's gonna go to the aileron channel. That's about it, so I'm gonna glue this spar down, take the tape off, glue the top of the spar, and then glue the top to the trailing edge, and the wing will be completed. The ailerons are the last piece to cut out, and they measure 30 by 4 centimeters. Similar to the other control surfaces, you're going to want to bevel the side that interfaces the wing. In addition to that, I make all of my hinges out of strapping tape. 3M, I think. After attaching the ailerons and installing all the control horns, I laminate the model, as seen here. I've done that with 5mm document laminating film and a heat shoe, but you can also do that with just packaging tape. Uh, additional final touches include a strip of duct tape here on the top of the wing mount and another strip of duct tape on the bottom of the wing. This provides a high friction interface for the wing, which is just going to be held down here by rubber bands. In addition to that, I have placed mounting tape on the bottom of the wing mount that's going to be used to mount the wing mount to the fuselage, and that provides a sort of vibration damping modular way to put these pieces together that's not glue. So if one of them breaks, I can replace it without having to rebuild the rest of the pieces. You're going to want to make all final finishing touches to the pieces themselves before mounting the pieces together. So if you want landing gear, now is the time to install it. I mostly take off and land in grass, so as you can see I've duct taped some bush wheels onto mine. I also glued a PVC card to the front of the fuselage just to give it a little extra strength. After mounting the pieces to each other using mounting tape, just hit all the seams with duct tape. You can see the fuselage is now nearly completed. The next step is to install the push rods. To get the push rods the right length, I use one of these handy dandy servo testers to hold the servos in a neutral position and then an adjustable nylon clevis to get the length exactly right. I also place this tail skid on one just with PVC cards and mounting tape. If you land softly and in grass, this isn't really necessary. But since the elevator is mounted at the very bottom of the back of the fuselage in this design, I think it definitely helps. 